Welcome to Medicine of Meadville. I'm Dwayne Kohler from Meadville Medical Center, and I'm hearing a lot from folks about, uh, hey, what's going on at the Vernon Project? So you can see over my shoulder, the Vernon Place Project is moving along. We are going to get an in-depth tour there today from the construction manager. Um, also, uh, we want to see, you know, kind of some of the stuff that goes behind the scenes in a big building like that and what makes it all come together. Um, before we get to that, Mike Carr from Crawford County Sports Medicine and Meadville Physical Therapy, Meadville Medical Center's Physical Therapy Department, is going to show us some new technology. One of the things that's going to be moving in here, and uh, I think I'm going to get a chance to try out something that's pretty interesting. So stay tuned. We've got a lot going on today. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Joining us now is Mike Carr, Crawford County Sports Medicine at Meadville Medical Center and Physical Therapy too. That's correct. We got something really neat here, and I learned about this a little while ago. Mike, tell us what this is, and, and uh, you know when it might be when it might be helpful to somebody. Uh, this is uh, called an anti-gravity treadmill. It is uh, brought to us by a company called Alter G, and essentially what we're able to do is put individuals that have uh, decreased weight bearing uh, limitations or difficulty with walking or running and we're able to get them into this machine and essentially when we raise this up uh, we're able to uh, inflate kind of a bubble around the individual okay. which then can help us uh, decrease the amount of weight bearing forces that they have on their body. So that pressure that bubble's got it. So we got me in we got me in one of those with a setups here to make Correct. that work but that pressure is going to kind of like take my weight off. Correct. So if I'm recovering from a hip thing maybe a foot thing a knee thing ankle thing I mean a, a, a lot of things that might be uh, Beneficial, beneficial to still get me moving, correct? But not having all the pressure of my my normal weight at the set. Okay, okay. Yep. So what we're trying to we can actually take you down to 20% of your weight. Okay. So we're trying to reestablish as much normal function as we can within any limitations that you have, either post-surgical limitations based on a physician, re, you know, um, referral that you may only be able to be. 50% weight bearing on your right lower extremity after and you can, a knee you can surgery. get that precise that you're going to be able oh, to get? Okay. Yeah, we'll be able to come down okay. um, on the percentages or even if it's not necessarily based on a limitation um, on weight but just on function where pain um, might be a limiting factor, we're able to get you in here, reduce the amount of weight that you have uh, on your uh, lower extremity or back for that matter and then able to you know, try to promote that normal function of walking which is what we're trying to essentially do with everything is get you back to normal function. What kind of ailments or injuries might be, you know, this might, might be a recovery from? Uh, we do a lot with post-surgical uh, hips, knees, uh, ankles. Okay. Um, a lot with uh, some low back pain and discomfort. We've had individuals in here um, that have had a stroke that are trying to work on uh, reestablishing that normal gait pattern. Uh, we have a young man that comes in um, that has spina bifida and is relatively okay. wheelchair bound but in order to try to get his cardiovascular fitness up and his overall function and for some weight loss purposes, That's um, great. we're able to use that. Uh, he's an interesting uh, uh, young man to begin with. His goal uh, at one point was to walk a mile and we were able to actually get him in huh. here and he, and he walked a mile. So um, he was pretty excited about that. It was, pretty, awesome. it was a pretty neat thing. His parents were here and his grandparents. And so it was pretty exciting. But it, it transverses all diagnoses. Okay. Um, to be able to get in here and utilize. So now we're here at the at the Vernon location, but when the correct. new building opens up here, um, uh, this will be moving over to the to the new Vernon Place building. That's correct. So, well, can we get me hooked up here? And absolutely. So um, I, I step up in. Well, actually, you can step right. There's a. This is hard underneath here, so you can okay. step on there and then right into the center, which is called the cockpit. And now, for someone who's who's not as tall as me, or someone who's bigger around or smaller around than me, you got different sizes of this thing to, to hook them up in. Yeah. Okay. The purpose of the neoprene shorts, um, when we get you, when we get the cockpit up, we zip into that, and then that helps to create that uh, the that, seal that pressure for the seal up there. Correct. Okay. We bring the cockpit up and around. Essentially, we want that up to right about hip level and you're going to be right about the top of that with your height. I'm a tall guy. There you go. Okay. And so we bring the cockpit up and around and you want to tuck this underneath here. That bit. lip tucks under. Okay. Yep. And then you should have the start of the zipper there. Now that's a heavy duty zipper like an astronaut zipper there. That's correct. So then it zips all the way around. It's like it goes like around one and a half times it looks like. Yep. Thank you. 
So that thing's grabbing me kind of around, around my waist. Yes, the level of the shorts, you actually want to be right around the top of the hip bone uh, or what's called the greater trochanter, which is down okay. a little bit. Okay. Your shorts might actually be a little big because we had those over your dress pants um, and whatnot as well. But essentially you want a, a pretty tight seal uh, so that okay. you have a, a, an airtight seal underneath. So once the shorts are in place, we hit the start button. It's going to fill with air. As okay. it fills with air, it's going to feel like it wants to push you up. So you want to make sure you keep your feet flat so okay. we don't get a, an abnormal reading. And once it does that, it'll establish a weight for you. But the other nice thing about it is the machine doesn't show the weight. So for somebody that would be concerned about it showing what your weight might be, it does not do that. So it's going to calibrate. So I'm seeing on this little video screen here now a view from the front. So there's a little camera down in there that's... Correct. Okay. We have three cameras that surround the machine. There's one in the front, one on the side, and I'll move one in the back here. And that provides us a, a visual ability to educate the patient. They're able to see their own stepping mechanisms as well as we're able to see how they are functioning so that we can educate them on how to do things. You might feel that air it does. It feels like you want to lift me, yeah. Correct. So I'm trying to keep myself on the ground now? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I didn't plan ahead very well. So what kind of clothes would I normally wear if I was going to be using this for rehab? Uh, like you would workout want to clothes? Have just like workout kind of clothes. Okay. What we do with a lot of uh, uh, people is if, if they know that they're going to be in this, they'll actually wear like spandex underneath a pair of shorts. So they'll do their regular workout session. And then when they go to get in here, they'll slip the shorts off. Then the spandex on the spandex gives us a nice clean seal. Okay. So when we start walking right now, you're essentially at 100%. This whole cockpit should be up high enough so when you start walking, you should feel like you have freedom of movement of your hips. Okay. So I'm going to start to turn the speed up. Now you work out typically, correct? I mean, I, I do. A, a, a normal walking speed, somewhere around 2.8, 3.0 is a is a nice warm up. So now, how does that that feel? Pretty normal inside. You feel like you have good freedom of movement. I think so. And so you then you're able to see again with the camera. You know, that's our side stepping. And then that's our from behind camera. We do have the ability to raise the TV up as well. Again, you're one of our tallest people we've had in here. Okay. So you almost have to look like you're looking down on it. The cameras are really, really nice to help people with the education portion of what we're trying to do for gait training. So that's about a 3.0 at 100% of weight bearing. So I'm going to take you down to 80% weight bearing. And again, as this fills up, so it's putting more pressure in this chamber here below correct, me. Below you. Okay. And again, it's going to make you feel like you want to raise up. You want to make sure you keep yourself down. Okay. And what they've told us, and, and what their research is showing, and from Ultra G when they sold it to us, was that at 80 percent weight bearing in this machine, you're getting the same cardiovascular workout that you would at 100 percent weight bearing, but, I'm, but, but less, with 20 percent less pressure on your joints. Less pounding on that on that repair job. Correct. Okay. Um, either on that, or if you know, we have people in here that may be pre-surgical for a total knee that are trying to lose some weight, okay. and you're able to actually get them to a, an area where they're able to work out, try to lose some weight, but not cause any increased pressures on those joints. So now that's 80%. I don't know if you feel much different or not when you're walking. A little bit. But we're going to take you down to 50% of your weight. And again, as that fills up, you want to definitely make sure you keep yourself down. But you ought to be able to feel like you're almost much more oh, freedom yeah. of movement as you're in there. Kind of strange. It is a bit strange. Um, if we get you all the way down to 20%, then you really feel like you're floating. Like you're walking on the surface like of the moon? Yep, like you're walking on the moon. Mm. Interesting. Yep, so you can feel how that's decreased pressure yeah. on your joints. So with a, a post-surgical person, with someone that's in pain, then we really are trying to reestablish that motion, reestablish that strength to help with uh, the gait pattern, be able to visualize what it is that you're doing so that if for some reason, say you're not extending your knee all the way straight to hit your heel when I you're understand. stepping, okay. you'll be able to see that on our, on our middle 
camera, you'd be able to see that you're not, so we can help to correct you. Okay. They, hey, hit that heel while you're stepping. That'll take away your limp while you're walking. Then when you start to walk on land, it'll help to take care of your limp. And you can also run in here. You know, I'm gonna take you down a little bit more weight so you can see what that feels like. But you're able to get individuals up and running at 50% of their weight to get them. They might that, not be able to do that for a long time at 100% correct. just out, out on the sidewalk. Okay. And, then, and also you get some of those athletes that we have that have the surgery and have not run for you know, four months. They've got quite a bit of apprehension. And you're able to get them in here, tell them they're gonna be decreased weight so they get a little bit more confidence before they can go okay. back on land. Because if something were to happen here, all you essentially have to do is pick your feet up and then you can you can balance a little bit and then get them on the sides where if you're trying to run on land and something happens, right. you know, you're gonna either fall down or you're gonna have some significant discomfort. I'll lower your weight again a little bit so you can kind of see what that feels like. And each time you, you lower the weight, again, you feel like you get that you pressure. Feel, I feel pressure against my body. Yep. Um, but it's like my feet are barely, feel like they're barely touching the, the ground here. Correct. So I can, we can go down as low as 20%. So in another color, a couple another really nice features of this also is it actually inclines just like a regular treadmill as well. Okay. And the belt will go backwards also. Oh, really? So if you really need to train somebody to walk you know, downhill because they do a lot of that, then you're able to, you, know, you can put them in there, essentially put them in there backwards, raise it up, and, and walk downhill and train them that way. The same with walking uphill. I know certain, I, I know uh, my wife had a uh, issue, a uh, torn meniscus, and walking downhill really irritated that. Correct. Uh, that of all things, a, you know. Yep, that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on your knee when you try to walk downhill. That joint, along with the quad, have to control that descent. Yeah. So you can get a lot of discomfort okay. like that. So this is a machine that can help you to train in that way. Interesting. Do we have the traditional uh, perform or the traditional shorts that you put on that essentially just zip in the front. They do make some also uh, that have a, that you're able to actually turn sideways in so you can do uh, some Later, lateral specific lateral training like, in like here. Like getting a lot of basketball and Correct. tennis and that sort of thing. So if you were to start, if you just consider yourself a base stealer and you start <laughs> sideways and you can take two to three steps and then turn forward and run, yeah, that is something that if you have to be okay. forward to acquire the right sense of shorts, you could do that. And they're, I think they're working on it. They may have just established a pair of shorts that you can go 360 degrees. Wow. Interesting. Now at the 20%, you really feel like you're floating. Oh, yeah. But if you were to take somebody that's been significantly deconditioned due to a, a you know, major surgery, whether it's joint related or even you know, heart, cardiovascular, um, potentially a cancer individual that has been down for a long time and you're trying to reestablish even some cardiovascular fitness, you're able to get them in here, get them a workout, but not have so much pressure on, pressure on their body sure. and joints that they're worn out in two or three minutes. This way you're able to get maybe a 10 or 12 minute workout, get them some fitness, some cardiovascular, which is all gonna then promote us back to being you know, a normal function. Okay. That's really, that's, that's a very interesting feeling. And I, you know, I can raise the incline up. So you can see yourself starting to walk uphill. Walk uphill. You know, that'll, that'll raise up. Nope, I feel that a little bit. Yep, we didn't raise you up very high, but you know, now you're, now you're, you know, you're walking uphill. And again, if you wanted to train somebody downhill, then we, we put them in backwards. Okay. And a lot of times for individuals that may be coming back from, uh, you know, a stroke or, or something of that sort, you know, want to train everything. So to, to walk backwards, you know, on here can be very functional. If you have somebody that has a significant hamstring issue, okay. you know, that kind of thing, you can get them to walk backwards as well. And it gives you all the displays. It goes time, distance. You know, right now we're on an incline, the number of calories, uh, uh, the pace. So it's just like a normal functioning treadmill in those regards as well. Okay. But we found it to be so far extremely beneficial uh, in the concepts of what we're trying to do therapeutically. 
with those individuals that have had surgery, that are deconditioned, that re need retraining with gait. Uh, a lot of individuals we have might use our pool first, okay. and then they have a treadmill in the pool as well. But obviously walking underwater in a pool is very beneficial, but it's still not. This gives us a stepping stone then onto the land, okay. which then allows us to, to transition that person from the pool to the anti-gravity, and then from the anti-gravity to land. The other thing you can do as well is you can use this for exercises uh, at the decreased weight bearing without doing the treadmill portion. So if you have somebody that uh, is having a tremendous amount of pain just trying to squat, you can get them in here, not run the treadmill, take them down to 50% of their weight, okay. and then show them the proper squatting mechanism and, and techniques so that they're able to start to strengthen those muscles so there's less pressure on the joints and the, muscular, the muscles take over without causing them the pain in the joint. And now you'll really feel as we start to bring you back up in weight, you know, you'll really start to probably feel that difference again. I'm not feeling it yet. Oh, there it goes. I can now a little bit. So if we bring you back to say 50% of your weight, you're going to feel like you've got some more weight on you again. I feel like my feet are a little bit more on the ground now. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't, don't feel you have that same floating ability. And then as we continue to go back up, so that's back to the 80%, wow. which now after you've been at 20% for two or three minutes. I feel like I got an elephant on my back. Correct. You really feel heavier, <laughs> and that's still not even 100%. How about that? That's amazing. So it's been very beneficial, and, and for a lot of individuals, it really helps to, to instill that confidence. Sure. You, know, you bring them out of the pool, you're able to put them in here. You know, for some people, they might come with a restriction of 50% weight bearing. Well, nobody really knows what 50% weight bearing is. Well, you, know, you can do it exactly here, you right? You can do it exactly. Sure. Correct. You know, you have to, you know, in, in, in previous time, you know, you put your foot on the scale and you try to yeah, see what it's yeah, like. We're yeah. in here, you could put them at 50% and you know that that's what you're getting. How about that? And if we go back up to the 100%, then you're really gonna feel just like you're walking normal again, but because you were down so low. <laughs> it feels funny. Yeah. Now the one thing that we have had for people that get in there for uh, quite a bit of time, you know, they do say it gets pretty hot underneath there. Um, hmm. You know, they, they just feel like their legs are, are kind of hot when they're, especially if they're running or, or doing something a little bit more uh, longer term. When they get out, they feel like they're, you know, I have one, one patient that says it needs a butt fan in there <laughs> to, to try to keep them cool, so. Well, that's great. So then to get out, we just undo the cockpit. Okay. And if you want to go ahead and undo the zipper there. And then it's just going to kind of fall down around me, it right? It does. Now, the one thing that I always caution people uh, especially when we're Make initially sure your, in this. Get your feet out of the way. Well, and you want to kind of hold to one side. You've got your, your dress pants okay. on. Okay. But if you're wearing spandex on spandex, as this comes down and releases that airflow. Keep your pants on. Yeah, you don't want to lose your whole, your whole apparatus. Then you can go ahead and turn and you can step right in that middle portion again. Back on dry land. Yes. How and about so again, that? you do. There is a set different sense now that you've been walking <laughs> essentially 10 minutes at decreased weight bearing. You get back onto land and, and it does have a little different feel to your yeah. to how you feel. So, well, so if someone needs to order this, they if someone needs this. The doctor needs to order the service for them. Currently, that's correct. If um, you're if you're working if you're working on a rehab after surgery or whatever, orthopedics is probably going to be on top of that already. You'll be correct. Uh, yeah, we work very closely with, with um, Dr. Gailey. Was very uh, instrumental in helping us to get the machine. Uh, as well as Dr. Petskuski and, and uh, Dr. Frendak was quite um, pleased when we got it as well. So uh, we get a lot of orders for physical therapy down from them you know, with uh, anti-gravity treadmill a as an order on it. Uh, but it certainly has uh, other potential usages as well across other diagnoses. So you know, if there's another physician that thinks it might be helpful for their patient, you know, we can certainly do that. Well, as those things come along, tell us, Mike, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll plug them out there for you. But Sounds Mike, great. Mike Carr, thanks for showing us oh, the anti-gravity treadmill. Appreciate oh, you're that. you're very welcome. Thank you.
joining us now is TJ Halpin. Am Correct. I saying your name right? Correct. Okay, good. Well, thanks for Macero. We, we appreciate you being with us today. And My what's pleasure. Going, what's going on behind us here? It looks like some, some earth moving. Some guys are working in a hole. That's always a good thing. Yeah, that's this is all of our uh, power and telephone data coming into the building. So they're coming from a vault and the ditch line runs into the building into a uh, telephone electric room and eventually we'll connect over to the power pole over so we're there. not going to see we're not going to see wires hanging overhead that's a, everything's kind of underground. a common thing now in a new construction well yes, i guess that's a, i guess that's both a safety thing and an aesthetic thing you know absolutely absolutely so uh, now again over your over your shoulder i see a guy on a crane and there's some welding going on what's going on over there it looks like uh He's uh, an welding open in a fairly open space. In that. Uh, that is the exterior wall of the therapy poles, and he's welding some brick angles on to support the brick veneer. Okay. That's going to be on the back side of the building here. So that part of the building will be part of where our where our uh, YMCA folks are going to be correct. with their gymnasium. That is correct. Portion. Okay. Yep. Now let me ask you. Let me. I'm allowed to ask one dumb question as host of the show here. But someone asked me that. Boy, that 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 siding that you have on there is awful bright. You know, why'd you pick that color? Now that's not the that's not the permanent color. Is that right? Uh, no, that is just an exterior seating. Uh, there's going to be layers of insulation and plywood. The lower section is going to be all brick veneer, and the upper section will be an insulated uh, uh, aluminum panel. Okay. So that's just that's just purely protection. Okay. <laughs> So I see a crane over there too. Now the crane's lifting up some steel. That's uh, that's making um, some of the structure. Yeah, Is that, that right? Yeah, he was uh, here and, and did all the uh, steel, uh, the lifting for the erecting crew. Um, right now it's sitting dormant. We're waiting on a couple items to come in, and uh, pretty much we're we're just buttoning up some uh, loose items here. Very good. Well, let's go take a closer look at a few things. Absolutely. So TJ, I see a guy welding over there. You mentioned that before about the, yeah, getting ready for, for the brick to go on there after. Correct. There's a lot of welding. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that, that you a know. A lot of welding. Yeah, all these exterior connections are all welded and we had them inspected and yeah, a lot good craftsmanship here with the with the local trades. The, the metal framework, I mean, that comes on early in the project, but that's essential to make everything else sort of stay, stay together. Off of it, so it's essential that it's it's correct and, and done properly. Now in this area behind him here, I see mm -hmm. kind of a pit. That's where the therapy the that therapy is pool is going to be. Correct. Yes. So how is that? I mean, the, the plumbing is someone comes after. I mean, obviously we got we got to make all the structure first, but yeah, the plumbing's already in. It's underground and it's okay. stubbed up. So and along with the electric and once the poles are sent we'll make all the interconnections uh to the pole systems now i i think our I think our viewers can see you still got a lot of snow piles and patch, patches of ice sitting around here I, I gotta ask you how'd the guys make through this this had to be the worst winter i can remember in decades anyways oh. how, how to, how'd it go i mean how'd you get through that well being from pittsburgh area traveling up to needle every day i was warned about the winters up here and i didn't think they were quite as bad as what uh, the guys told me but they are, and and it, it did. It, it was uh, it was a struggle. Um, we persevered, slowed things down a little bit. We actually had a couple of weeks where the cold and, and uh, weather conditions prohibit us from working, but uh, we have a plan in place to make that time up and, and deliver the project on time to the Meadville folks. Now, if frozen ground does that impact, you know, foundations and that kind of stuff, yeah, and luckily, cement drying and all that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, luckily we got foundations and all the masonry up prior Before to got the frost. Cold. Correct. But uh, in the meantime, we had to tent the, the building in, pump heat in there so that we could do concrete work and, and start some uh, finishes. Construction workers, firemen, police, you know, they have a reputation of being tough, tough guys. Guys that are working when it's, you know, the high temperature zero, you know, that that's, that is a tough guy, you know, so. Without question, without question. I mean, I, hats off to get to the local tradesmen. Uh, they, they they made it through. There's some tough guys here and, and they continue to do quality work while we were uh, fighting the weather. Well, let's see some more. Absolutely. So TJ, what's going on over our shoulder here now? I see some uh, some work going on up there. What's that? Yeah, they're doing some uh, fireproofing uh, on the beams behind. You can see the brown, like yeah. woolly stuff. That's actually a fireproofing uh, insulation that gets attached to the exterior beam. 
and then they'll cover it with this green product uh, called Dead's Glass. Okay. Now, the green product does it provide some insulation? And it, does it provide some soundproofing and all that kind of stuff? Uh, it's more of a weather protection okay. and an exterior sheathing material. Um, it's impervious to the weather, so we can leave it exposed till the till, till the final skin goes on. So it uh, it does it does its job well, and it's a nice green color. <laughs> Very good. A lot of interesting equipment that goes on to make, make construction happen. This lift here, you can just, uh, just, watch, just watch this fellow move the thing around. That's pretty, pretty good. Huh? They're, they're critical to a job like this when you're working up high. As you can see, you get access, you're able to work safely off, off of a stable platform. Um, Done. Without them, it would be a very difficult uh, task to, to build a building like this. I'm also seeing the safety marks. Is everybody very, very safety conscious? That's a great thing. It's, it's very important. We want everybody to go home at the end of the day just as they had arrived safely and, and without injury. So safety is, is, is the utmost importance on a uh, project like this, and we, we uh, enforce it. Now, these pieces here that we see, mm -hmm. these are going to be part of the exterior? No, this is... The, the masonry structure behind us is the stair tower. Okay. So all these pieces will go inside there and make up the stair tower. Got it, okay. Okay. Well, let's take a look inside. So TJ, we moved inside here now. I gotta ask you, we had, I had a, a project at my house here a number of years ago, and all the, all the uh, inside the walls were all pieces of wood. Now here, they're not wood. It looks like they're all metal. Yes, it's all metal. Why, uh, why is that? Uh, the fire rating. Okay. Uh, you know, we don't, there's nothing in this building that's uh, combustible. So any lumber that we will use will be, uh, it'll be fire treated, non-combustible okay. material, but all the framing and, and everything else is a uh, metal stud system. So what, where are we located in the building now? It's on the plans and you get a little confused in the middle of a project like this. Yeah, we're, we're right in the uh, future YMC space, YMCA space. Okay. Um, this is uh, the aerobics area, right in this area here, and there'll be some wide open areas around the perimeter for different exercises. And uh, uh, this, this side here is pretty wide open. Not a, not a lot of office space in here. I'm kind of curious about the, the lobby. Maybe we can take a look at that area. Sure. I know on the plants that was really interesting with the, uh, you can see a long ways, a long ways through there. Yep. So pretty interesting, all the stuff that you never see when you go into a nice new building is what's kind of underneath the wall and underneath the ceiling and so on. All, all this, all this, uh, the steel and the aluminum and things that we're seeing here, what's going on there? These are our, uh, our mechanical system, our HVAC system. Okay. Uh, they are the highest points in, in the layer of mechanical, so they go in first and then all the other mechanical systems follow, plumbing. Uh, electric and sprinkler system. Okay, so how do you figure out how, you know, did you, some, some architect figure that out? So how does that work? Well, the, the basic design was in place, but we have, we have used a, a BIM model, which is a computer-generated 3D model that, that lays out every last piece of ductwork, pipe, uh, conduit, anything overhead, and it, and it detects clashes on a computer screen before it, we encounter oh, it here in the field. So they're able to make adjustments. Um, I have a, a, a computer program that I can view and look to make sure everything's going in correctly. And, and they do all the, the, the guesswork for us before we even get out here to start the work. Now what connects the duct work to the building? I see some straps. Are those, are those to, the, to the steel that's holding up the upper floor there? Correct. Yeah, okay. they can go to the deck or into the, into the red structure uh, of the building. And eventually there's, there's a chase down by our elevator that shoots up to the roof to all the air handling units. They'll be fed from up there. Now on the floor behind us here, I see some what looks like some plumbing things going on. What's, Correct. What's that? These are all of our sanitary lines for the new uh, locker rooms. Okay. Uh, so you, we have uh, shower stalls uh, that will be set in these areas. 
vanities, we have uh, toilets. So there's a, all the underground plumbing, again, like you take for granted when you go to use a facility that's, that's underground and you don't even realize how it works, that's already been in place. It's interesting to think about the sequencing. You gotta get all that stuff done before the floor, before, yeah, very good. Absolutely, yep. So we, were, we got lucky we were able to get all this in before the bad weather hit. So, TJ, those parts I saw outside didn't look like a staircase to me, but now when I see one put all together here, I'm saying, oh, okay, I get that. It's like a, yep, like a big giant jigsaw puzzle. Now, there's concrete on top here. How does that work? Uh, the, the stairs are what's called a pan, and they're about an inch and seven-eighths deep. So then actually concrete goes on top of that. Correct. And then on this on this platform that we're standing on here, mm -hmm. again, the concrete's only just... Well, it's a little thicker a little on thicker. the landings, okay. yes. And uh, again, it's a, it's just a big pan. The steel fabricator uh, fabbed all these up, and as you can see, it fit very well. It worked out well. So when we come back sometime, we'll see a fancy staircase that'll be you know nice nice painted to finish on, and, all painted yeah, up and whatever. And it's, it's funny to see it in in, the, in between steps like that. Pieces laid out in the pieces laid out in the construction yard here and now put together, and then uh, the final step somewhere down the road. Yeah, this is in in, in a somewhat raw state, uh, you know, before all the nice finishes go in but it's functional and we're able to use it now here on the project very good so tj downstairs we were seeing all the duct work and things already you know moving along really well so we're pr we're prior to that stage here right here yes. in, the up, in the upper level that is correct uh just as we're we did down below we are still working on the bim modeling up here for all the mechanical systems so it's not quite complete yet we're close uh, and until that is complete, we just do not do any of the work. So this area is going to be the doctor's office part of the building. For that the is correct. Con. So, mm -hmm. so you know what eventually will be. I don't know. I think I heard forty some offices. Yeah. Um, now it just looks like like a big open space, and I can see on the floor you've got marked where the where the walls are going to be. And correct. It's, it's to me it's fascinating to see this project. You know at this this early stage here, and, and how it's going to change. So, so right now we're on the the east and the, the you know kind of the northeast mm -hmm. part of the building. Correct. Um, as as this grows, we still have some more structure going up out back. Uh, just the gymnasium, if you could see right behind the plastic. This, this is basically the extent of the building from front the, to okay. back. And that last piece where we saw the steel going up outside, that's the, that's the final footprint of the building. Correct. Back. That is correct. Well, I, I appreciate the tour. I think one, one last thing we want to see that, that atrium that everybody can see from, from the road coming through. We'll take a look at that in a second. But, but appreciate, uh, appreciate the oh, walk around the tour. And, uh, we'll be back. We want to catch we want to catch up with you here several times through this project. So Perfect. We appreciate the talk. Thank today. you. Thanks for making me a part of this. Hey, TJ, I thought we were going to catch you loose a minute ago, but we got this bird's eye view here. This is this is great. So we're looking at the lobby. We're looking out at the at the main road out there. What's this room that we're standing in now? What's this going to be? This is our uh, mechanical room that will house our boilers and chiller equipment. I think one thing that's impressive to folks is to see this this curved roof and this this you know very open atrium part of the building here that's uh, uh, pretty unique in a building like yes, this. Yes, it is. But this is going to be sort of the signature view that you're going to see looking at here from the inside. That's correct. And, and all these openings around us will be infilled with large glass windows. Same with the front. It, it's windows and all the way up, so it's going to be a nice open area. Well, TJ, thanks for thanks for the tour oh, today. We appreciate, so appreciate that very you, much. Uh, having me a part of this. We'll, we'll come back. We want to see some steps as we're going along here. We appreciate that. I I, I would love to show everybody uh, some more views from here. Very good. Thank you. y'all enjoyed the show today i certainly always always love getting into these construction projects part way through because i think folks really they tell me anyways that they like to see things um, in, in various steps so we're here at a pretty early stage in the uh, in the vernon place project and and uh, thank you for joining us to watch all that today big thanks to mike carr to show some of the new therapy equipment that's going to be moved in here and to tj halpin from mazero for uh, taking us on a tour around and uh, we will be back so uh, stay tuned for that somewhere down the road we'll be back for a couple more trips but uh, big thanks to the folks at home for joining us on, on medicine in Meadville today, and we'll talk to you next time.